All right, welcome back. We're at episode 24 now, and we're going to look into um, applicative factors today. Um, I know a lot of people have asked me about this, um, and truthfully, um, functors and monads actually make a lot more sense than applicative functors, or they did to me. The intuition was simpler. Um, but I think part of it is because often you see applicative functors shown uh, by the apply method, which makes a lot of sense. But I'm going to try to explain them in reverse by explaining lifting first, um, because there's kind of two different intuitions for them. Um, and I think in this case, um, for me, this makes this is much more the lifting portion. It's much more intuitive. So let's see what we have to say about this. So once again, I'm Reed Evans. You can find me on Twitter at Reed and Evans. So we've talked a lot about different contexts and there are contexts like maybe uh, future. Uh, arrays, you know, a lot of different different things that we could do. Um, if we have a function, the problem is when you start code, the problem you can come into is when you start writing a lot of software um, and you're dealing with these other contexts, you may not have, you may have a function like, let's say, addition. Right? Let's do something simple. Given an x and a y, we were, you know, given a number and a number, we're going to return another number. Okay, so if we're in addition, we take an x and a y, and then we return x plus y. Very, very simple. The problem comes into, what if you have values in contexts, and you still want to use this addition function, which knows nothing about a context? Nowhere in here do we have a context, right? Just straight, easy, easy, number, number, number. Well, what we can do is we can actually use the lift function. I mean, depending on which language you're in, this is going to be a little different. Um, but if we're using Ramda and we're using JavaScript, um, we can call lift on addition. And you see what the result of calling lift on addition is. So addition takes a number and another number and returns a number. Once we have lifted addition, then the result lifted here is given some applicative of a number and another applicative of a number, it'll return an applicative of a number. Now, I haven't exactly defined applicative, but stay with me here because an applicative is whichever context you want it to be. So lots of contexts are applicatives, maybes, uh, eithers, you know, but you, you can look at the RAM, at the Fantasyland spec and, and what Ram Fantasy has implemented or, or, or whatever your language is um, the, of, as far as what might be an applicative. So what we could also then do, or to show a, show a concrete example of that even, now we have our lifted function. We can pass maybe of 1, maybe of 2, and we get maybe just of a 3. So addition knew nothing about maybes, but once we've lifted that function up, we can now use maybe and maybe. If you notice in our definition here, applicative f, and that f is in every single one of these. So Whichever applicative instance you choose uh, has to be the same for all of the arguments here. In other words, I could not use a maybe here and a list here or an array here. Uh, what I could do is use an array and an array. So lifted one and two uh, would give me an array of one element, which is three. Uh, but I couldn't I couldn't mix them because this f is on every portion of this uh, type signature here. Um, so what we could also do, and, and because we're returning this applicative, is if we said maybe dot nothing, and we comment out this so that the uh, so that it works, the whole thing has to resolve to nothing um, from a maybe standpoint. So if we were to lift maybe of one and nothing, or if we were to lift the addition function and then supply it with maybe uh, with a just of one and a nothing, we would get nothing. And that's the implementation for applicative on the maybe context. Um, so this has been lifting. Um, basically, you can deal with, if you have a function that knows nothing about contexts, you can lift that function so that it will work with whatever context that you're dealing with. You just have to stay within the contexts here. Um, as it turns out, this is very, very beneficial for things like uh, form validation and stuff. So we'll see some of that going forward. 
but I just wanted to give hopefully a little bit of an intuition for what you can do with applicative functors. Um, we haven't seen what actually makes an applicative functor, but just know that because these things are applicative functors, we can use this lift function to allow functions that don't know anything about a context to be passed um, arguments um, that are actually within a context. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.